how do we train for power? How do we train for strength? How do we train for injury preventiveness for track and field? Now understanding track and field, you have a whole bunch of athletes. You have a huge spectrum of athletes. You got distance runners, you got sprinters, you got jumpers, you got throwers, you got multis. Everybody has their own individual needs. But one thing nearly everybody could use is power development. We know through sport and sport performance that out on the track, that power always comes through the hips. Power is the intersection of power development and performance, so we're always gonna train that in here. In the weight room or a training facility as such, we utilize the Olympic lifts. We know those Olympic lift move, the Olympic lifts and the Olympic lift movements are really good from getting us to a flexed to an extent movement pattern as quickly as possible. So you kind of narrow it down to what we're doing on a runway. What are you doing in a high jump? What are you doing in a ring as a thrower? Heck, even a sprinter out of the blocks. Every movement going from zero to 100% is going to utilize that hip extension. So in this facility, we choose to use the Olympic lifts and the Olympic movements to mimic that movement and train that movement for optimal crossover and sport performance. Now going through some of our Olympic movements, I like to take the big movements of our clean and our snatch and I like to break them down into simple compound movements. The thing you have to understand or remember at the end of the day, we're doing these Olympic movements to practice hip extension. It's hip extension that occurs in the shot put. Hip extension occurs in the discus, even in the first movement out of the blocks. Through track and field and through sport and sport performance, it's all about the hips. That's why we choose to utilize this movement. Now, our first movement I like to take out of the clean is just the simple shrug and I'll call it the power shrug. Now, something that we always talk about is our postures and our positions. We want to put ourselves in a position in which our hips are low and our chest is up. Our back is nice and flat and neutral. From this position, we're going to retract our scap, keep our core nice and tight, and jump and shrug. As long as our hips extend in a nice rapid movement, that's all we're looking for. What we're trying to mimic here is that triple extension that we would get in the shot put or out of the blocks as a sprinter. Taking the Olympic movements, the big ones, the bread and butter, the clean and the snatch, and breaking them down into compound movements. Movement that I like to utilize for both for teaching and for training outside of the power shrug is the high pull. Okay? So again, like we've talked about before, we want to get ourselves in the starting posture. Low hips, tall chest, scaps nice and contracted, and keep that core nice and tight without holding your breath. If I was holding my breath, I could not in fact be talking to you guys right now. So that being said, one notion that I want to add to this high pull is our first pull and our second pull. Okay? Our first pull off the ground is from the ground to this power position. Okay? From the ground to that power position is the most volatile part of our lift. That's the part of the lift where a lot of stuff goes wrong. And we want to talk about creating sustainability through athleticism. We want to keep our back as healthy as possible through all this training. The first pull is a slow and controlled movement. Not necessarily too slow, but just slow enough that you can maintain your posture. You want to be able to keep your hips low, your chest up, your core tight, and your scaps nice and contracted. Once the bar gets to your knees, being the power position, you go ahead and accelerate, extend the hips, Pull the bar up to your chin as such. Low hips, tall chest, retract your scaps, nice tight core, nice and controlled, and up. 